Assalamualaikum everyone. We will continue our lecture with the last part of topic 3, business cycles, unemployment, and inflation. In this video, we will look at the redistribution effects of inflation. Inflation redistributes real income. What that means is, it may help some people, but it may also hurt other people. So who gets hurt and who benefits or who are unaffected when there is inflation? To answer this, we need to understand the difference between nominal income and real income. Nominal income is the amount of income, in terms of the number of ringgit, that is received by individuals or groups for their resources during a certain period of time. For instance, wages, rent, interest, or profit. On the other hand, Real income is the amount of goods and services that can be bought with the nominal income during a certain period of time. In other words, real income is the purchasing power of nominal income. It tells us how much you can actually afford to buy something. To calculate real income, we divide nominal income by the consumer price index. Purchasing power is important because, all else being equal, inflation decreases the number of goods and services that you would be able to purchase. The redistribution effects of inflation depends on whether inflation was expected or not. Let's begin by looking at who are potentially hurt or harmed when there is unanticipated inflation. The first group is fixed income earners. For this group of people, their nominal incomes do not rise as price level rises, so there will be a fall in their real income or their purchasing power when inflation occurs. An example would be elderly couples who receive pensions each month. They may have retired in the year 2000 on what appeared to be an adequate amount of pension, but in 2020, they would have discovered that the higher cost of living had reduced their purchasing power tremendously. Another example of fixed income earner is landlords, who receive lease payments of fixed amount every month. They are hurt by inflation as they receive ringgit in declining value over time. Likewise, civil servants, whose incomes are fixed, may see a decrease in their purchasing power. The second group is savers. Savers will be hurt by unanticipated inflation too, because as prices rise, the real value or purchasing power of their accumulated savings deteriorates. Of course, most savings earn interest, but the value of savings will still decline if the inflation rate exceeds the interest rate. The third group is lenders or creditors. Unanticipated inflation harms lenders because as prices go up, the purchasing power of the ringgit goes down. So borrowers will pay back less valuable ringgit than those received from the lender. For instance, Bank A lends Ali 1000 ringgit to be repaid in two years. If in that time the price level doubles, the 1000 ringgit that Ali repays will possess only half of the purchasing power of the 1000 ringgit he borrowed the owners of Bank A will suffer a loss of real income. Not everyone is harmed by unanticipated inflation. Those who receive flexible incomes, especially if their incomes are tied or indexed to the consumer price index, may escape inflation's harm or may even benefit from it. For instance, some workers may get automatic cost of living adjustments in their pay as CPI increases. Another example is property owners who, faced with an inflation-induced real estate boom, may be able to boost rents by more than the inflation rate. Business owners too may benefit from inflation. If product prices rise faster than resource prices, their revenues will increase more rapidly than their costs. Unanticipated inflation may also benefit borrowers. In our earlier example, real income is distributed away from the owners of Bank A towards borrowers like Ali. The redistribution effects of inflation are less severe or eliminated together if people anticipate inflation and can adjust their future nominal incomes to reflect expected increases in the price level. For example, lenders may avoid the harmful effects of inflation by charging an inflation premium together with a nominal interest rate to the borrower. 
Besides redistribution of income effects, there are other effects of inflation. Inflation can cause higher interest rates when demand pull inflation occurs. As a result of demand pull inflation, the government may raise interest rate to cool demand in the economy, but that may risk too sharp a downturn and lead to recession instead. Inflation is also bad for investment, as firms do not like uncertainty when planning business ventures. Businesses may demand higher return to compensate the possibility that costs will rise in the future. Additionally, inflation also discourages savings, as people would need more money for consumption. So, if banks receive fewer deposits, they cannot lend as much. Cost push inflation may reduce real output too. If you refer to the previous video lecture, you can see that cost push inflation happens when there is a fall in aggregate supply or output. Inflation may also increase menu cost and shoe leather cost. A menu cost is the cost to a firm resulting from changing its prices. The name stems from the cost of restaurants, literally printing new menus, but economists use it to refer to the costs of changing nominal prices in general. Shoe leather cost refers to the cost of time and effort that people spend trying to counteract the effects of inflation, such as holding less cash and having to make additional trips to the bank. Money loses value with inflation, leading to a drop in the purchasing power of an individual ringgit. We will end today's lecture with a quote by Ronald Reagan on how he views inflation. Inflation is as violent as a mugger as frightening as an armed robber and as deadly as a hitman.